Hey you, hey, it's me, sexologist Shamira, and you are listening to another conversation on the green couch with sexologist Shamira. Well, I decided to start or begin with this conversation. Since we're in a new year, I thought this one would be perfect for us to start with. First, let me tell you why I decided to start with this one. And if you don't know what the topic of this conversation, it is being a beginner and why so many people have a problem with being a beginner. But I want to help you improve your dating, sexual relationships, and your love life by embracing being a beginner. So a few months ago, don't and don't laugh, but A few months ago, I decided to start roller skating on quad skates, right? So I decided to start skating, right? Um, Yes, we're still in quarantine. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. And I wanted a fun way to um, do some fitness stuff. So I was like, well, skating is super fun, right? Hmm. Skating, y'all, as an adult is a whole different thing. As an adult, it's it's a whole thing, right? I remember as a kid, we would go to the skating rink and we would put on skates and we would just skate. I have found out so much stuff about <laughs> skating and skates. Listen, I've learned so much stuff. I feel so much more confident about skating as an adult now. I've gotten much better at skating within a, as an adult. But let me tell you, in the beginning when I got on those skates, I was like a newborn giraffe or something on these skates. I was very wobbly. I had all of my protective gear on, butt pads, knee pads, shoulder pads, hand pads, head pads, helmets, every pad. I was padded down and I'm still padded, right? But um, I just didn't, I really didn't want to hurt myself. And so what I did was I recognized that this isn't what I thought it was going to be. It's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. So I started doing what I do is reading and looking for information and trying to figure this thing out. So I did it and I found some great, great, great information and sources, groups. I know I just recently um, changed my own wheels and bearings and loosened my trucks. Mm -hmm. I told you I know this stuff. I know this stuff. So I did all of that stuff and um, I was speaking to someone recently about my new hobby of skating. And they said, well, do you know any tricks? I say, well, slow down. I just told you that I just started skating and I'm okay with figuring it out. I'm not. No, I don't know no tricks. I say all that to say, no, I don't know no tricks. I'm okay with being a beginner, right? I'm I'm a beginner at this, right? I am just starting out and I'm going to take as much time as I need to take. And when I learn tricks, I will let you know. However, I have learned how to do this technique called scissoring. Some people call it bubbles, but I have learned that and I'm getting better. But what that process has taught me that being a beginner and embracing being a beginner has helped me on this journey to learning how to skate better. I found that so many people are very uncomfortable with being a beginner. Whether that's at a new job, whether that's with a new partner in a relationship, especially with dating, people want to go straight to expert status, especially even as a professional, right? Even as a professional, I'm always in the beginning mindset because it keeps me fresh. It keeps me on my toes. It lets me know what's new out there. It allows me to reach the people I want to reach in a different way, but If we think about what beginning is, what the word begin means, it means to start. And a beginner is someone who is starting to learn a new skill or do a new thing, right? So I'm a beginner skater as a very, um, a very adult person. (laughs) I'm a beginning, I'm a beginner skater and I'm okay with that. In dating, it's okay to be a beginner. 
in your relationships, it's okay to be a beginner in some things. In your sexual life, it's okay to be a beginner. I find that some people don't even want to be a beginner in their sexual relationships because they want to know all the things. They want to know how to do all of the things and you have to start somewhere in the best way to become better at sex, love, and relationships and dating is allowing yourself to be comfortable starting or beginning because it opens you up to the possibilities of learning. When you allow yourself to embrace your position as a beginner, it means that you're open to learn. It keeps you fresh, right? Being a beginner is uncomfortable for um, a lot of people because of one thing, comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy. And if you are following me on Instagram, you know that my word for 2021 is joy. I am embracing all things joy. The skating is bringing me joy. Learning new things is bringing me joy. I have about one, two, three, four, five planners in front of me right now. That brings me joy. Um, Feeling like I'm having my life together. It, It brings me a sense of joy. But people are uncomfortable being a beginner because... Or comparing themselves to others and I say that I wanted to join a derby team and I'm looking at all of the other derby skaters and they're just going and going and going I'm like oh my god they're really good I can't wait to get like that right of course I want to get like that um I want to be great at what I do I always want to be great at what I do but I always want to make sure that there's that I have a process in getting there. Um, when I first got on the skates, I was very uncoordinated. It felt awkward. Those are okay. Those are all okay feelings. And it's pretty common for a beginner to feel uncomfortable. Whenever you're learning something new, you are learning something new. It's going to be uncomfortable because it's a new thing. And that is okay. Here are some ways that... You can embrace being a beginner, right? Here is a here is a blueprint on how to be a beginner, right? First, you want to make sure that you set a goal, right? And we'll talk about goals that in, in another conversation, but you want to have a goal whenever you're starting out or something. What's your goal? Why do you want to do this? What is your why? And then you next, you want to acknowledge your discomfort with starting out doing the thing and then you want to embrace your discomfort allow yourself to feel the uncomfortableness is that a word well if it's not it's a word now allow yourself to feel uncomfortable doing the new thing because what that does is it allows you to search for new and fresh more information and apply it right Here we go with the next step. Do not compare yourself to someone else. Don't do that. Be open to change. You are starting because you want to do something different. And in order to do something different, you have to do something different. This means that you're doing something that you likely haven't done before or that you've done before, but you're doing it in a different way. So be open to change because that's what your goal is all about. You're going from one process to the next. And then what you want to do finally is continue to focus on your goal. Even if you get off track, go back to your goal. You don't have to change your goal, but you definitely can change your plan on how you get to that goal. And you keep repeating, you keep remembering your goal. That, those are some tips on how to be a good beginner. This is what you shouldn't do. Pay attention to that word, right? You shouldn't should on yourself. So a lot of times when people are beginning, they say stuff like, I should know how to do this. Oh, look at them. I should know how to do it like them. Uh, Don't should on yourself because that is a judgment and also a comparison. It's all about what you want to do. Again, go back to the goal, right? So let's talk about beginning in dating, beginning in your relationships and beginning in your sexual lives, right? So in dating, People are really talking about how hard it is dating right now. And one of the reasons why it's so hard and why people are finding that they're in and out of dating relationships is because if I'm being honest, people have no idea about the concept of dating. And that is another conversation as well. But let me give you a little gem on dating. One, it's all about your goal. 
what is your goal for dating? I have a dating guide on the greencouch.com that I wrote in 2019 when I was named one of the most influential dating experts of 2019. And it outlines what you would be uh, helpful doing in your dating process, which that might look a little different right now in 2021, but the concepts are still the same, right? You want to have a goal. What's your goals? Everyone's goal for dating is different. Allow yourself to be a beginner. It doesn't matter if you've dated for the past 17 years. Allow yourself to go into the process willing to learn and to do something different. A big issue is a lot of people are dating in 2021 with ideas they had in 2019 or 2017 or 2015. It's 2021, right? We have to change our idea of what it means to date And I don't mean to change your core values. I mean, what is your goal for dating? Are you dating because you want a partner? Are you dating for exclusivity, for commitment? Are you dating um, for a booty buddy? Allow yourself to know what your goals are. But most important, you need to be transparent to whomever your dating partner is or your potential dating partner. And you want to date someone who is looking for the same thing you're looking for. So for example, if you are looking for someone to be exclusive and committed to, which are two different things, don't get it twisted. Exclusivity and commitment are two different things. And we'll talk about that. But if you're looking for exclusivity and commitment, don't date someone who's only looking for companionship. Okay. You would think that that would be something that's known, but A lot of people don't know that, okay? There is a process to dating. One, you want to know your goal for dating. So if you are, let's just say you're a person who you're at a point in your life where you might be looking for exclusivity and commitment and well, and then commitment. Don't forget, it's okay to be a beginner in dating. Every time you date someone, you are beginning. And a lot of people hate that starting over process. I hear that a lot on the green couch. People say, oh, Shamira, I'm so tired of starting over. I'm so tired of telling this person what my favorite color is. (laughs) Okay. Well, it sounds like you need the use your mouth, sex and relationship conversation starter cards, which are also on my website. So you can know or have some different conversation starters in your arsenal. Okay, but you want to have a goal for dating. So if you're looking for exclusivity and commitment, one, you have a goal. You want to go in the places where people who likely share your same goal might be right now. Internet dating is a thing. Um, It's healthy for a lot of people. If that's your thing, fine. If that's not, okay, don't worry about it. Maybe think about it. But you want to first ask other people what their goals for and make sure you let them know, like, this is what I'm looking for uh, right now. Don't try to change anyone's mind and don't allow anyone to change your mind because you'll, you'll resent that in the long run. So have a goal for dating and think about the process, right? So the beginning process, the first step is the scouting. This is where you're looking, right? The next step is where you might see someone who you share common interests with. So you contact that person and this is where you begin the process of figuring out if this is someone you want to move down this process with. Do you share similar goals as this person? Hmm? Okay, maybe so. So you might go to the third step, which you might choose to move to a discussion phase with this person where this is where the data collection begins too. Dating is called data collection. I call it data collection for a reason because you are um, retrieving information from a person to see if you would be compatible, if you have chemistry, if this is someone you like, someone you want to continue to move forward in this process with. If you choose to date more than one person, that is your prerogative. If your dating partner chooses to date more than one person, that is their prerogative as long as you are transparent about the process. You let them know that Right now I am in the process of seeing who I am compatible with and who I share similar goals with. So I am talking to other people or I'm dating other people or I'm communicating with other people. However you want to let them know it, please do that. Um, That makes beginning as a dater um, more palatable for you and other people as well. So you might choose to move to the discussion phase where you are collecting data to see if 
you want to start courting this person or if you want to meet this person, right? I recommend in the discussion phase to at least if you are meeting this person online to at least do some video calls. One mistake people are making is they meet a person today and tomorrow they're planning to go on a date with them. No, no, no. They're planning to go out in public or meet up. Don't do that. You meet a person, again, you're beginning. People are trying to rush this process. Don't worry about rushing the process. Go as slow as you need to, okay? If you meet a person today, talk to them for a few weeks because you might find out that you don't want to go in public with them. And that's there's more information about that in my dating guide, but you want to schedule some uh, phone dates with them, schedule some video dates with them, and then you might move to the next stage where it's the data collection where you do more uh, conversing with them and then you decide whether or not you want to move to exclusivity so exclusivity means that you both mutually agree that you are only going to date each other and you define what that means together that's what exclusivity means. It does not mean you agree to be partners. That me- I'm sorry, to be committed. That means that you might say, okay, we're exclusive right now. So I'm only going to date you or I'm only going to date you and this other person. So you decide to maybe stop using your apps for a while or only focus on this person because they've shown you that you share similar goals, you have similar core values, and you want to move forward with them. And they might be the person who you can pledge some commitment to. Okay, so if after a while of dating, after a while of collecting the data, you might both agree that you are ready to be committed to each other, which commitment is different from exclusivity in that commitment is a plan on how you choose or how you will choose to spend your time together with each other only with mutually agreed on relational boundaries which might include a lifetime partnership marriage or something like that okay so that is the process of dating and that is making sure you understand how important it is to be a beginner in dating now you might be someone who is like shamar okay okay well i'm not Uh, in the process of data collection. I'm in a relationship. So what does this have to do with me? Okay, well, the goal of any relationship is growth. Okay. And growth is a lifelong process. You, You don't stop growing. If you stop growing, then that's a problem. And that is a problem for a lot of relationships where they stop looking for ways to grow with each other. Okay. So growth in a relationship is a lifelong process. So You are always a beginner in your relationship if your goal is growth because you want to make sure that you and your partner is setting goals, you know, that continue to create a connection between the two of you based on how you are growing individually and collectively. Okay, so that might look like recognizing, wow, when we first got married 10 years ago, We both like this. Now we like this. Or you like this. And now we like this. So let's talk about what that looks like going forward. How we've changed. Because we all change. And we don't change at the same rate as our partner. But we always need to discuss and adjust to each other's changes. That doesn't always happen easy. But it it makes it easier when you are okay with being a beginner when you're okay to learning new things about your partner you're okay to understanding what your partner's intimacy needs are and if you have the book use your mouth pocket-sized conversations to simply improve seven types of intimacy in and out of the bedroom you'd know what i mean by your partner's intimacy differences and intimacy needs they are different for example one of the biggest issues is physical intimacy versus sexual intimacy if you were a beginner in your relationship then you might know that five years ago your partner was okay with massages leading to sex now your partner is like look i really would like if you decide to give me a massage give me a massage or it might be you you might have been okay with massages that led to sex uh five years ago but now you want more physical intimacy that doesn't always lead to sex you want to be touched in different ways 
and just be touched in different ways. And then when it's time to have sex, you're okay with it going different ways. You might be someone who wants to explore different things with your partner sexually. Five years ago, you might have not been an oral sex type of person. But today, you might be interested in exploring oral sex. And that is why you need to use your mouth. You need to talk to your partner. Your partner needs to be open to being a beginner, to listening to not that you're a new person, but you do have new ideas. You get new information from the world around you. And although these conversations may be awkward, they may be uncomfortable, that is okay. Again, as a beginner, it's okay to experience the discomfort of learning new things about a person you've been with for the past 10, 15, 20, 3, 2, 1 year, okay? It is okay to be a beginner. Embrace being a beginner. I, I tell people that I'm a lifelong learner. And in order for me to be a lifelong learner, I have to be comfortable with being a beginner in, in most of the spaces where I uh, allow myself to venture. Okay, because again, it keeps me fresh. And if you want to be a beginner, if you want your relationships to thrive, allow yourself to be okay with being a beginner. Be okay with learning new things about your partner. Be teachable. Be okay with your partner learning new things about you. Be okay with teaching your partner new things about yourself. Because a lot of people are uncomfortable with saying, hey, <sighs> That was the old me. The new me doesn't like that because we don't want to cause any conflict. And if you're following me on Instagram, you know that I'm talking about how to engage in healthy conflict uh, this month on my Instagram in various different ways. But again, people are uncomfortable being a beginner because one thing is is uncomfortable. We compare ourselves to others and we should on ourselves way too often. Being a beginner is the goal to more successful dating and better and more connected sex and romantic relationships, even in other types of relationships, friendships as well, because we change. We might have been way more open to doing things four years ago, 10 years ago, 15, 20. I might be talking about myself 25, 30 years ago that we are not open to doing today and it's okay to say that but it's also okay to learn about your friends beginnings and to share those beginnings with them until next time you have listened to another conversation on the green couch with sexologist shamira <laughs>